Good afternoon, this is Andy Schweitzer and this is a video, a little bit longer video, it has a, a lot of information here and to, to be honest, it's hard to deal with this video, this content in a 20 minute period, um, 15, 20 minute video. So this is really just an absolute basic introduction. I'm not saying that this material is difficult, it's just more details. Um, this is uh, basically looking at electron structure around an atom. Um, of course, atoms are always looking to become more stable through chemical reactions. So um, they will either gain or lose electrons uh, and um, to attain a more stable, what's called electron configuration, electron orientation. Um, <coughs> so um, this model, which is uh, going to be called the quantum um, mechanic model, um, will help us create a model that would have some amount of predictive power so that we could maybe someday produce um, or predict how everything is going to work. Um, again, that is the reason why we're here for science, is to be able to predict the future with our models of the in theories. Now, what you probably already know is that uh, electrons uh, in you know, energy levels around a nucleus and most of the kids that I come across know that there's this sort of a picture here and there's a certain number of electrons um, in each orbital and, and um, in this case the energy level would be labeled, labeled as N and first energy level, second energy level, third energy level, fourth energy level and most people can tell me there's two electrons in the first one there's uh, eight in the second energy level and 18 and um, beyond that most students don't really understand when they get here why the electrons are there and how that might relate to stability okay so other than that um, they know electrons are negative so beyond that this everything else here should be new so this quantum theory is essentially going to utilize four quantum numbers in order to describe how electrons are, are, are filling electrons in around the atom and hopefully that can help predict some amount of function. Uh, this particular PowerPoint is going to deal with essentially two different, um, uh, two of our four. Pause them. All right, so our four quantum numbers here, and I'm only going to deal with two of them. Uh, first one is going to be what's called the principal. quantum number. Now again this is starts vague and becomes more and more concrete uh, more and more specific to the actual electron. The principal quantum number is symbolized by an N and it represents the energy level. Different energy levels have more electrons so we're not really designating any one individual electron but we're getting a little more specific. N can equal 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, and again this can increase in energy as we go out. That's something important for the future. Um, and then we have the orbital quantum number and even though a lot of people think of these energy levels like orbits around a sun, definitely not the case. Um, there's lots of space there, and there's lots of room for different shapes of orbitals. Um, we have designated a few different types of orbitals which would be the s orbital, the p orbital, the d orbital and the f orbital. Um, these orbitals have been assigned numbers so a quantum number um, just to sort of get a letter name or a number it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. Um, the symbol would be L. L equals 1, L equals 1, 2, or 3. Um, <clears throat> these orbitals have suborbitals and the suborbital, so this is orbital, these suborbitals have uh, different amounts. This just has one, this has three, five, and seven, and then every suborbital can hold out two electrons max. It can hold less, but it cannot hold more than two. Uh, therefore, total number of electrons, two, six, 10 and 14. These are the total number of electrons in the sub, uh, in each orbital, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, uh, different energy levels have different 
acquire different orbitals and different numbers of orbitals, and that is kind of how we'll eventually start building our model based off energy levels and orbitals. So next up here, okay, we are going to, I think I have, okay, uh, we're going to start looking at or energy levels and orbitals, okay? So this is called, this chart to your right here is called the Aufbau chart. And in class, we would spend some time creating this and looking at it. Uh, I'm going to draw an x-axis here, a y-axis here, and an x-axis here. On the y-axis, I will just put down the energy levels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then on the y-axis, I will uh, include the orbitals. Now, a few things I will note about this, and you can re you should be creating your own. That's probably the best way to get it in your mind <coughs> is to uh, understand that uh, every time we increase an energy level, we gain one more orbital. Um, in this case, the s orbitals can hold two electrons. The p orbitals can hold six, uh, ten. 14, and then of course G and H really don't get used much because they are just way too high energy uh, as opposed to in this case the lowest energy is right here this is the best place to be energy increases in this direction energy increases in this direction this is the first orbital obtained or filled if I were to simply sometimes I envision a person pouring electrons onto an atom and they would just like a plinko, they would plop, 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 plop down to the best possible spot. And if that's full, they'd take the next spot. Um, and these are all the orbitals and suborbitals on each energy level that are available. So <clears throat> we do what's called an electron configuration. And an electron configuration simply states that, okay, if you dump a number of electrons on here and they fill, they were going to fill in by the blue line here, and the blue line will point to the next best orbital or suborbital to fill in. Um, when this one's full, it goes to the next spot, which then will fill in the 2s. And that one's full, which holds two electrons, uh, follows by the 2p6, which holds six electrons, the, two, the 3s2, which holds two and then just continues on and on and on until you legitimately run out of electrons. Um, something very simple, let's say like a hydrogen. I'll give myself a little more room here. Uh, a hydrogen has only one electron, so the electron is available to go in that first suborbital, which would be 1s1. Uh, a helium atom has two electrons, so that thing is now full. It's going to be 1s2. A lithium would have three electrons, so the first energy level gets full, and then I'll, um, I have to move to my next energy level, which is going to be 2s1. Total number of electrons, which usually is not indicated here, uh, and you look on a periodic table, this is three electrons. Uh, add up the overall electrons for equaling three. Uh, if I had, let's say, uh, lithium with a plus one charge, this is now only two electrons. It would be the same, or isoelectric with helium. It would be 1s2, okay? Um, the term isoelectric simply means same number of electrons, okay? Um, <coughs> as we get bigger, we just jump up to more, uh, more and more orbitals. If we were to go, let's say, with um, uh, sulfur, sulfur would have a grand total of 18 electrons, so I'll just keep filling them. Uh, two there, two here, six would be two, plus uh, be 10, 12, and a few more of those. So sulfur would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So I filled one, two, three energy levels. Um, 3s2, fill this one, and then it would be 3p3. That is uh, 18 electrons. Uh, if sulfur in its natural state could potentially gain two electrons, become S minus two, 
then this will just bump. Um, I made a mistake here. That should be four electrons, and that would be jumping just jump two more to a three p six. Okay. So the elf ball chart is very easy to use and just shows how the electrons fill in. This would be the absolute last one we'd fill in. Now, <clears throat> the this is difficult sometimes to recreate and follow your elf ball chart. So the periodic table actually mimics the elf ball chart, and what we have here is um, hydrogen would be 1s1. Uh, this would be here 1s2. And we'll spend a lot of time in class kind of exploring the PR table to see how this pattern works. But since we're on a short video, we don't have a lot of time. This is essentially the S block. This is the D block. This is the P block. And we have the F block right here. All right. Uh, we have the energy levels can somewhat be represented by the rows. First one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Now, the energy level is this number here, the row, and which kind of correlates to the row. Only time where it doesn't correlate is in the um, D block, which is in the fourth row. So this is 4s1, 4s2, but this is 3d1. This is 4d1, 5d1, 6d1. This is row 6. It fits in right here. Uh, again, the Fs are offset. These are offset by 1. This is offset by 2, meaning that this is the sixth row, but this is 4F1. Seventh row, 5F1. <coughs> Anyways, um, so uh, again, the S's and the P's, they match up perfectly. This is going to be 3S1. Um, this is 3P1. The way this works to do an electron configuration with a periodic table all you do is you start at hydrogen. You start building your atom as you work across the uh, periodic table. So if I want to do, let's say, uh, nitrogen, I start here and I work my way from here to nitrogen, which is uh, right here. All right. Um, one S two is first. So first energy S block and it's full. If I stopped here, this would be the configuration for neon right here. Um, continue on. Uh, lithium would be, uh, again, I'm going to continue to add on to this thing, so it would be 1s2 and then it would be 2s2. If there's a 1 here, that would be for lithium. 2 would be for beryllium. Um, 2 p block, so second energy level. p block, 1, 2, 3. 2p, three. 3. Right? Um, and that's nitrogen, and I'm done. So you start at the beginning and you start working away. To get to the atom you want. If I were to do iron, which would be Fe, uh, that'd be located right here. Fe, it's one, one, two, three, four, five, sixth one in. So based on what I know about this, it should end in three d six. That's what it should end in. And you, you definitely want to be able to look at an atom on the per table and know what it ends in. Uh, but start from hydrogen and work your way forward. One s two. That's helium. Hydrogen and helium. Um, 2s2, this is beryllium. 2p6, this is neon. Um, 3s2, this is uh, right here, which is going to be uh, magnesium. Uh, we have 3p6, uh, which is argon. 4s2, which is uh, just past calcium. Uh, what is calcium? All right, and then then we just gotta do six more. That would be three d six. Um, all right, and that's basically how it works. All it takes a little practice. Now there is a thing called a shorthand method. Uh, for as they get longer, in reality, all we're really worried about is the end, and that's what dictates the functionality. So if I want to do iron with a shorthand method, all right. Um, rather than starting with hydrogen to build it, I would use the previous noble gas. So here's hydrogen, all right? So I want to use the previous noble gas, happens to be argon. 
Uh, so basically, you put colon and brackets, you put argon down, and then everything previous to argon is represented by the symbol argon. And I start configuring just from the, the next after that. So it would be 4s2 and then 3d6. Uh, and that's it. The last little section would be listed here. Again, all I've done is show a couple of examples. Um, and there's not a whole lot more here. You just got to practice it and ask some questions when you have questions. Um, <coughs> if I were to do one more example, let's say one that's relatively long, okay, I could do, for example, iodine, which is 53. Um, iodine has 53 electrons, and I could do iodine or iodide. Uh, iodine has 53 electrons, and iodide has 54 electrons. Um, I'm just going to do plain iodine, uh, and I'm going to start from my longhand method. I'll just uh, include here um, one S two. I'm going to use a I'm gonna use a different color marker, and I am going to um, let's do this uh, right here. I'll draw a line through it when I cover it. Okay, one S two, two S two, and then two P six. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. I'm offset by 1, so I have to use the 3 instead of 4. Back to here, this is 4, 4p6, uh, 5s2, 4d10. And the last little bit, iodine, um, is the fourth one down, is right here. So I gotta go uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, P, 5. If I were to do iodine, it's, this is iodine, iodine would be a 6 here. Add one more electron in there. Shorthand method would be I, and then the previous noble gas is right here, and that is krypton. So I would go brackets, krypton. And then simply go start the previous right here. Okay, which is going to be 5s2, uh, 4d10, 5p5. And there you go. Shorthand versus longhand. A little bit of practice. Ask, get some questions, let me know.